Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Rankin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to test characters in C++. Right. So let's say that the user uh, types in some characters at the keyboard. You read them in using cn or cn.get and um, maybe get line store them in a string object and you want to test you know, what they typed in to see what type of characters they are, right? You want to check if they're alphabetic characters, you know, A through Z, right? Or you want to check if they're um, digits, zero through nine, or maybe a combination of both, okay? Um, you want to see if what they typed in was a white space character, um, like a tab or um, hitting the space bar. You want to test if they're uppercase or lowercase. You know, you want to test if they're punctuation like uh, um, exclamation points or periods and so on um, well you can do that and one way of doing it is to test their ASCII codes uh, but another way of doing it is to use maybe a simpler way is to use uh, functions that are already pre-written for you that are sitting right there in the standard template library and these are functions that are defined in the uh, CC type header file, right? And there's more than what I'm gonna present to you here. And I actually am gonna write a program that illustrates how these things work, but I won't go through every single one of them um, because they all kind of work the same, right? You're gonna pass a character as an argument to one of these functions and the function is gonna return true if it is that type of character, false otherwise. And then your program can do with that information, you know, whatever it needs to, okay? And so, Here's a link uh, to c++.com um, with, you know, information on the CC type header file. Okay. And there's more than just these functions, right? Um, you know, is alpha, is alnum, is digit, is space, is lower, is upper, is print, is punct. But these will be the ones that I look at. And I'll do just a couple of examples. Like I said, they all kind of work the same. And you can read more about them at this link here. And matter of fact, I'll uh, include this link uh, in the description below in case you want to check it out. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and write a sample program. All right, so let's say here I got, um, I got Visual Studio all ready to go, right? And uh, this is gonna be, you know, what we need gives us access to, uh, you know, all the is uh, functions, you know, is upper, is alpha, etc. Uh, I'm going to do something with strings here. So this gives us the string data type. And then uh, I'm going to read uh, from the user and display stuff on the screen. So we're going to have this for C in and C out. So, um, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do something here. So what I'll do is um, I'll just ask the user, you know, to enter enter a character right? and so i can use cn to do that and i'll create a character variable c and um you know i'll read in what they what they typed in response and then you know if i want to be able to you know tell if you know the character is a digit right then i could say something like this i could say well if is digit Right? And I would pass to that function the character that um, that they typed in, right? And then I could print out to them, see how you entered a digit, right? And then um, you know, we'll try it here and just see what happens. You know, and um, if they type in a character that's a digit, so say five, well then that's gonna tell us you entered a digit because that's gonna evaluate the true, right? But if instead they typed in like um, a, a, okay? Well then that's not gonna show us anything because A is not a digit. Okay, but we'll build onto this and we'll say um, else if is uh, alpha, right? And we'll pass that as an argument. Then we'll say, um, see out, you entered a alpha, alpha, um, betic character, right? So let's uh, try that. And we'll just, we'll just keep building on this decision structure. And then, um, 
and I'll show you something with strings and uh, something a little bit more interesting maybe. So, you know, now if we were to do, um, you know, say G, right? You entered an alphabetic character, yes. Okay. Um, now we could do else if is um, punct, right? And pass that. So that's going to evaluate the true if the user typed in a punctuation character. So, you know, you might say, you entered punctuation, right? And so in that case, you know, let's see what happens if, do an exclamation point, right? You entered punctuation. So, I mean, that's, that's how they all work. I mean, there's nothing um, too crazy about it, right? I mean, you just pass um, a character as an argument to any of these functions and they return true or false, right? So, you know, it could be, um, you know, you want to see if they entered in an uppercase character. If is upper um, C, right? And then you could say, well, it's it's an uppercase character. See that? You know, it's uppercase, right? So maybe we put this if statement, we nest it inside of um, the uh, alpha is alpha block, right? So if they entered an alphabetic character, uh, then we'll test to see if it's uppercase, right? Else, see how it's lowercase, right? So, I mean, they all work the same. I mean, there's nothing too fancy about it. Um, it's just, what do you need? You know, pick the right function and go from there. So well, maybe I do uppercase G, right? You enter an alphabetic character because it's true. That is alpha C, you know, if we pass G it to C, that's going to value the true. And since it is uppercase inside of that block, you know, our is upper is going to evaluate to true. And so, you know, we see it's uppercase. So that's really all there is uh, to it. You know, let's say that, um, let's do something maybe a little bit more interesting. Let's say that I wanted to write a function that um, asked the user to enter a number. Um, and I wanted to verify that they actually wrote a number. Okay, so I might create my own function that looks something like this. Right? I make a Boolean function. Is um, number. Okay, and for the first example, I'll use a string um, data type. Right? I'll pass it a string. Okay, so I'm going to need the um, user to give me that string and I'll ask him that number. Enter a number, right? Enter a, um, an integer, we'll keep it simple, okay? Because um, if it was a floating point number, then we'd have to deal with a period or, or with the uh, decimal place. And um, I'll leave that as an exercise because if you get the idea here, um, how this works, then try it on your own, okay? Um, so let's create a string variable here and call it input and send and then uh, we'll say cn uh, input okay and then we're going to need to test if it is a number if it is number and we'll pass input okay as an argument and then we'll say you know, see out you entered an integer uh, and then uh, else See, um, you didn't. Right? So, you know, just something, just something silly, just so you can get an idea um, for how this could work. Uh, so, how is this going to go? Right. Well, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to need to check every character in that string. Right. In order for it to be an integer, you know, the user is going to type in. You know, whatever they type in, whatever a user types in, it comes in. Um, into the keyboard buffer as characters, okay? It's the CN object that converts the, what they type into uh, the appropriate data type when it signs it to uh, the variable that you're using with CN. Okay, so we'll store what they typed 
as a, a string or into a string object. And then we'll just go character by character over that string, testing each character one at a time. Is it a digit? Is it a digit? Is it a digit? And um, if we get through the entire loop, right, we're going to just go through a loop. If we get through the entire string without false returning, well, then it must be an integer that they typed in, right? And so then we'd be free to convert whatever they typed into an integer. And then we could use that integer in subsequent arithmetic operations if we needed to. Okay, so maybe I have something that looks like this, right? So I could say um, for an i equals zero. Um, S of I, uh, let's see here. Oh, well, um, I less than, got ahead of myself here, uh, is that size, because we can ask a string how big it is. Okay, and then I could just do something like this. Uh, if not is um, digit S of I, okay. If it's not a digit at any time as we're traversing the string, examining each character one by one, it's not an integer. So we could just exit right now, right? If, you know, the user typed in one, two, G, four, right? As soon as we get to G, well, we can bust out of the loop and just return from the function. We'll return false because if there's G in there, it's not an integer. Okay, so we'll just um, return false. But if we can get through the entire loop, without ever having to return. That means that we had um, an integer, or, or excuse me, a digit character at every single place within that string. So then logically, we could just go ahead and return true, okay? So that's all, you know, we're just going character by character. And as soon as we discover that any of the characters is not a digit, we'll return false because it can't be a number. And so, uh, let's try. Okay, let's 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 give it a go. See if I blew anything up here. All right, so we'll type in um, 527. All right, you enter an integer because we stored the 527 in the string variable. We pass that string variable to his number. His number went character by character, right? And said, well, if five is not a digit, return false. Well, that was false, right? Um, if two is not a digit, then return false. Well, that was false, right? It was false to say that two is not a digit. Um, if four is not a digit, then return false, right? But four is not, not a digit. So this never evaluated a true, so we never returned false. And so the only other logical possibilities to return true, right? If none of the characters are not digits, then um, they're all digits. And if they're all digits, it must be an integer. Okay, so let's test it this time with uh, input that's not an integer. So maybe 86 high 32, right? So as soon as the loop gets to the H, right? Then this right here, this whole thing right here is gonna evaluate the true and will return false, right? Because is digit H is gonna return false. The not will flip it to true. And so then this if will be true and then we'll return false and then that false will come back up to our if up here and then that'll cause us to kick down to the uh, you didn't, okay? So let's do it. You didn't, right? So that's how you could test to make sure that a user enters in a uh, integer, right? Um, by using these tools. Um, anything else I want to show you here? Yeah, I mean, and once you got past, and I'll do this in another video, but once you got past your test, your is number test here, then you could, you know, run code to convert input to an actual int or something, and then do some math with it. You know? Do some math with it. Um, one other thing we can do here, uh, I'll show you another example, is you know whatever goes into the keyboard buffer is going to be um, characters, right? They're gonna be 
an array of characters. And so, essentially, and so, you know, we could just read them in as that array of characters, right? We could, we could read them in and store them as a C string. And so I'll show you, you know, we'll modify our is number function. Maybe we'll, I'll make an overloaded version of it. How about that? Um, so I would need to have a um, character array to store to store um, the uh, input, right? So we'll call this input C, right? Or maybe input array, right? And I'll make it 206 elements long just because, right? And um, so I'll, I'll do an overloaded version up here and we'll pass to it a character array, okay? And um, then we will need to go in here and make an overloaded version, okay? And so this will be um, character array, I'll call it A, okay? And uh, we're gonna read in, you know, whatever they typed, we'll use cn.getLine and that'll automatically um, append a new uh, a null terminator to the end of our string, to the end of the C string that we read from them. And so we can use that to tell us when the loop is over, you know, when the loop should stop terminating, or uh, iterating, excuse me. So we can do something like this. We can say, um, for i equal zero, a of i not equal to the null terminator, uh, i plus plus, right? And so then we can have similar logic here. We can say, well, um, if I can just copy this pretty much, right? Copy it and, uh, oops, pretty much copy it and just modify it a little bit because this is going to be the name of the array or the uh, character pointer here that I'm using is A. And so that should, that should do it. Okay, so let's uh, go up here and instead of reading into um, our string variable. Um, let's read into, let's use cn.getLine. cn.getLine. And uh, we'll read in um, to that array. Okay. Up to 255 characters because we have to save room for the null terminator. And uh, we'll use the um, overloaded version. So input. should do it right so this is going to do the same thing right it's just going to go character by character within that c string within that character array until it gets to the null terminator in which case it'll terminate right and so then once it terminates if it hasn't terminated the loop earlier because it came across something that wasn't a digit you know it's going to go ahead and return true but as soon as it finds an element that contains something that's not a digit then it'll return false because it's not gonna be an integer if um, it has anything in it that's not a digit. All right, so uh, yeah, let's test it. Let's test it. So enter an integer, 867, you enter an integer. All right, um, and then we'll test it with something that's not an integer, 86 um, high, All right? You didn't enter an integer. As a matter of fact, this should also tell us, you know, if we were to do something like this, right? Because the period is not a digit, right? It's punctuation. So this is a version that's purely going to be able to test. These functions are just versions that are going to test to see if these are entered into an entered in an integer. And again, um, what you would have to do after you verified is you'd need to um, convert. You need to convert uh, the string that they did enter, you know, either into that variable or into um, that character array like we just did, into an integer data type before you can do math on it. All right. Um, so that's everything I wanted to show you. Uh, let me let me bring up the uh, C++ reference.com just to show you what it looks like. All right. So yeah, here you go. Um, CC type. Uh, the C version of this library is ctype.h, but if you're doing C++, you want to use the, the C++ version uh, on your includes. And so here's a list of all of those functions that I told you about, and then some extras. 
Um, you know, you can check if whatever they typed in is a hexadecimal uh, digit. Um, there's is blank. I mean, that's that's new in C plus uh, plus eleven. Is control. Let's see if it's a control character. Um, if it has a graphical representation, you know. Then there's also other functions in here too. Um, two lower and two upper. But yeah, and then you know you can go and see, you know, examples here of how it, it would work. So you know, this looks very similar to you know what I just uh, just just walked you through. Okay. So yeah, so check that out, and uh, hopefully you found that uh, video useful. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.